For my first Shapoko 4 project, I wanted to cut out a guitar body. And I mocked everything up and all the calculations seemed right. But as you can see from this board, I have two areas where I burned in to the wood. And what happened here was, even though the calculations seemed right in my head, the router actually crashed into the wood both here and here. Now, you can see that the holes on this side, there are some holes that are drilled properly, and then this one was burnt out. This one actually represents the neck pocket, and so it will be carved out later, and so that one's actually not an issue other than the fact that I ran the router into the wood. And so what I'm going to do here now is resurface this board using a spoil board bit. And what I'm going to do is take it down about a tenth of an inch to see if that removes uh, all the burn marks. My board blank is 1.89 inches thick, and I'm trying to make a Telecaster-style body. And so taking it down a tenth of an inch shouldn't be that big of a deal. And so what I hope is is that the board gets resurfaced. Um, it doesn't matter that the holes will still be there. Um, those are where I intend the holes to be. Going down a tenth of an inch will still leave those uh, reference marks there. And then once I resurface this board, then I can go back again and try my program. Before I kick this off, I'm going to briefly show you how to do this in Carbide Create. And then um, we'll kick this off and see if it works. Now that we're in Carbide Create, the first thing that we need to do is to set up our blank size in the project settings. And so we can go over to the gear and the menu will pop up. And I know that my blank has a width of 22 inches and a height of 15 inches. In terms of the thickness, uh, the blank is 1.89 inches. This actually doesn't matter. Uh, for our operation, we're only gonna take a tenth of an inch off. And so the exact thickness uh, doesn't really matter. The next thing that we wanna do is to draw a square that has the same exact size as our blank. There isn't an option within Carbide Create to erase mistakes, but what we're going to do here is just surface the entire area of the blank. And so when we make the square 22 by 15, what this is going to do is give us a way to tell the computer to take the spoil board bit and resurface across the entire area. Once we have our square in place, we can go to the Toolpaths menu and select Pocket. And the first thing we want to do is make sure we pick the correct end mill. Uh, by default, it just uses the, the last one that um, you use for a project. And so what I'm going to do here is go down to my one inch spoil board bit. All of the settings have been put into the tool database already. And so now what we can do, we have a, a tenth of an inch here as our max depth. We can name uh, this tool path uh, something reasonable. Uh, in this case, we only have one toolpath, so it's not a huge deal, um, but it's a good practice to uh, name your various toolpaths uh, when you have more complicated projects. And so you hit OK, and what this shows us is that it's going to take about 43 minutes to do this tenth of an inch um, pocket operation. And here we can hit the simulation just to see what it might look like. Um, it's just going to go around in a square. And so... Um, now what we can do is export the G-code, um, which we'll put into Carbide Motion to actually control the machine. And so with that, that's how you do um, a very brief surfacing, um, flattening operation in Carbide Create. And so now what we can do is um, go back and actually see what the result is. In about a half hour's worth of time, I was able to go through 
flatten the top of, of this body blank and remove all the issues that I had when I ran the router into the wood. With the blank flattened out, now I can go back and redo the uh, guitar body that I was doing. And the important thing here to understand is that unless you change it, the CNC machine will have the same zero point, which is both the X and Y axes, uh, as well as the same Z, which is up and down. And so my body blank now is thinner, and so I'll recalibrate the machine to have a different Z zero point. But because I kept the X, Y points the same as when I had the, uh, when I was doing the guitar body, I can actually go back, restart my job, and all of these holes here for the strings uh, and this little, you know, area for the electronics cavity and even the little neck hole that's right here, all of these should still be in the exact right place. So this is one of the good things about CNC machines. Of course, as I get better at this, I hope not to continue to make mistakes like this, um, but it's awesome that you can program the computer to go through and you know fix things um, that you had. And so if you like more content like this, please hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, I'm a complete beginner at CNC, and so I'm going to be sharing what I learn over time, and uh, hopefully you find this uh, entertaining and useful.